Hey, good morning, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Paul. I own and operate TCI Development. We're a building contracting company located in Southern California. If you've been following along on all of our other projects, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to do a quick tutorial on fire sprinkler systems or the type of fire suppression systems that we use in residential construction. How they work, how they don't work, and how does a fire sprinkler actually know when there's a fire? The type of system that you see hanging here behind me this is a pressurized wet system. What that means is there's water pressurized in the system. If the sprinkler ever becomes activated, water is there instantaneous and comes out. The other type of wet system that we use, there is no water in the line. Okay, if that fire sprinkler becomes activated, it senses a pressure change inside the line and the flow meter will send water rushing to the fire sprinkler system and water will come out. So those are the two types of systems that we generally use. And there's a big misconception about how fire sprinklers actually work. You've probably seen in the movies or somewhere before about a fire happens and all the fire sprinklers come on and everybody rushes out and the sprinklers put the fire out. That is not the way they are designed to work. Fire sprinklers were not designed to actually put out a large structural fire. They're just to designed to give you time to get out. Okay. And now, they do have the ability of putting out a small fire, but they're not designed to actually put the fire out. They're just designed to give you time to get out. Now, the type of fire sprinklers that we're using here are concealed sprinklers. You can see this one hanging down right here. However, when this residence is completed, you will not see these systems when you look up in the ceiling. There will be a flush cap that sits flush to the ceiling. And if that sprinkler ever becomes activated, the water will push that cap down and water will come out. But if you've ever gone into a convenience store or been in someone's house and you've seen sprinklers hanging down in the ceiling, you probably noticed a little color-coded glass bead. Now it doesn't have to be glass, it could be a color-coded metal bead. And all that is is a glycerin liquid, sugar alcohol mix, and that color that you see is what indicates the fire temperature rating for that sprinkler to become activated. Now the color glass bead we're using here is red. Red has a fire temperature rating of 135 to 170 degrees. Yellow and green have a temperature rating of 170 to 225. And if it were black, like we would use in a industrial building, that has a fire temperature rating of 560 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, how that little glass bead works, it's a fusible link, okay? And like I said before, it could be glass or it could be a color-coded metal. It's a fusible link. So if you think of it like this, let's say you have a trap door up here on the ceiling and you put a stick underneath the trap door. Nothing can come out the trap door because you put a stick underneath it. That's essentially how the glass or the metal fusible link works. It's the little stick holding the trap door closed. When that breaks, based on its temperature rating, when it breaks and that sprinkler becomes activated, then the trap door opens and the water comes out. This type of system that you see here, this orange pipe, this is just like PVC that you use in residential irrigation outside in your lawn. However, it's a fire rated system. This is called CPVC. That stands for chlorinated polyvinyl chloride, CPVC. Okay, no difference than the lawn sprinkler irrigation that you have. Okay, it's all PVC. This one will just withstand temperature to a certain uh, rating. So that's how the systems work. And like I said before, they are not designed to put out structural fires. They do have the ability to put small fires out. They're just designed to give you time to get out. Now, there's another misconception about how fire sprinklers work. They do not all come on when there is a fire on the residence. They only come on whatever sprinkler comes in contact with its fire temperature rating, as I stated before with the little glass bead, only that sprinkler will activate. There's a reason for that. If you had a small fire in your kitchen, and let's say the fire did $2,000 damage, could you imagine the damages if all of the fire sprinklers came on in the whole entire residence? So you'd have $2,000 damage from the fire, and then you'd have $200,000 damage from the flood that happened when all the sprinklers came on. So that is why they are not designed to all come on at once. Now, smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms are designed and daisy chained together, and they're designed to all come on 
at one time. The reason for that, let's say for example, let's say you're taking a shower in your master bedroom and there's a fire in the kitchen. If only the smoke alarm was activated in the kitchen, you would never know that there's smoke or there's fire on the premises. So they're all daisy chained together to go off to let you know in case you are in your bedroom or in another room or you're taking a shower, they're gonna let you know that, hey, somewhere on the premises there's smoke or there's carbon monoxide or there's a fire. So now we'll go down and we will take a look at the flow meter which controls this system and see how that all operates. Okay, so here's your flow meter right here. You can see your main water line coming in right here to the CPVC. Okay, so the main water line, I told you it needed to be a dedicated water line. It's gonna tie in right here. It comes from the meter up the street, will come down and be a dedicated line that ties into the CPVC. It goes up, goes into the flow meter, which regulates when there's pressure change inside the system. You can see here, we have it pressurized already just to make sure that there's no leaks. Okay, we also have electrical coming out of that that goes right up here. What's going up here is a fire bell. Now, this particular system for code and regulation through the county did not require us to have a fire bell. However, I put a fire bell on every project. That way, if this resident has ever gone out of town and there's a fire on the, on the premises, that fire bell will go off and let the neighbors know that, hey, there's something wrong down here. So we put a fire bell on every system. Codes are not, regulations are not. That's a smart thing to do. So here's your flow meter right here. That determines if there's a flow change in the system or a pressure change in the system. This white line that you see right here is a drain line, okay? Because sometimes you need to drain the system to work on it, right? You don't want to try to take a sprinkler off inside somebody's house or inside a commercial building when it's pressurized. So you drain the system first after you cut the water off up at the meter. Here's a look at the flow meter from the inside. You can see the line going down where it ties into the main dedicated line. And then you can see it goes through the flow meter and then it goes up through the attic and then carries on to the rest of the system. Well, that is just a brief tutorial on how fire suppression systems work for residential and for commercial. Hopefully this has answered any questions you may have had about those particular types of systems. I just wanna cover one more thing real quick. Read your insurance policy if you have a resident or if you have a commercial uh, business, read your insurance policy and see if you're covered from flood damage. I bring this up because I recently had a client that had a small fire in the residence. The fire did about $1,000 damage, which was covered by the insurance. However, they did not have flood insurance coverage. And the fire department came out, put the fire out, and they were out of pocket about $6,000 on the water damage from the fire department. So call your insurance agent, ask those questions. If you have fire sprinklers or you don't have fire sprinklers, are you covered from flood damage from those sprinklers if you have a fire or if the fire department comes out to put out the fire? Hopefully you've learned something about fire suppression systems and this was helpful to you. And hopefully you've learned something by watching our projects that'll help you with your project. Have a great day.